Good morning, everyone, and welcome to week eight of Money Sense Mondays. The lesson in the next 30 minutes is for young people aged five to eight, and we're going to look at how small costs can have big impact upon our spending. Everything adds up after all. My name is Lisa Lofer and I'm the Community Banker for the Royal Bank of Scotland and I cover Renfrewshire, Inverclyde and also North Ayrshire. There are lots of things that cost money in life and the good news is that over half of the people in the UK make a note of what they spend their money on. Keeping track of spending the small items however is where everyone could use some help. If a family went out one month and bought a car it is likely that they would have saved up for that purchase or create a plan to pay for the item over a time. Either way, they will make a note of the cost of that expensive item, such as a car. But what about the smaller items? Do they make a note of that? I'm not sure. When they buy a nice cream or a bag of sweets or go to the cinema, what do they do then? The cost of small items like this is what we're going to be looking at in today's session. Hello everyone, my name is Miss McPherson and I'm a primary teacher in Scotland. As Lisa said, this is our eighth and final Money Sense Monday session because it's time for us all to enjoy a well-deserved summer break after all of this year's learning, both in school and at home. Lisa and I have loved being virtually welcomed into your home to help you learn about different money topics, so we're looking forward to sharing lots of exciting activities with you for one last time. During the session, you will need some pens, paper and a calculator if you have one. Hopefully you have these already, but if not, quickly go and collect them now. While we're waiting to make sure everyone is ready to get started, let's say hello to some of you at home who have joined us today. So I can see that we've got Katie and Robert Burns with us. We've also got Ted and Bea. We've got Ridley, age seven, who has been with us, I know, a few times before, so it's lovely to see you back. Good morning to you. We've also got Amy. Morning, Amy. And we've got Philip, age seven, from St James Primary School in Paisley. And we've got Orla and Enya watching as well, and they've been with us from the start as well, I think, there, Miss McPherson. Great, we've got lots of people with us this morning. So let's start by thinking about some of the fun things that you like to do at the weekend. I know that it's been a wee bit different since we've been in lockdown, but there might be some things that you've done that you don't usually do because you've been in lockdown. But if you want to share with us some of the things that you used to do before we ended up um, in lockdown, then feel free to do that as well. So whatever you think is fun to do at the weekend. So if you can, share your thoughts with us in the comments or write a list um, at home on paper. And while you're doing that, we are going to join our connected families to find out what fun things they like to get up to at the weekend. So let's join Joseph and Liam first. So they're back with us. Hi, boys. Hi. 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 How are you this morning? Good. I'm fine Good. too. Super. I'm glad to hear it. What kind of fun things do you like to get up to at the weekend? Uh, going to the toy shop. Oh, that's a good one. Going to the toy shop, spend your money, yeah. Liam, what about yourself? What do you like to do? Cinema. Cinema, that's a favourite of mine as well, going to the cinema. I'm a bit gutted that they're not open yet, but fingers crossed we'll be able to go soon. Thanks, boys. We'll come back to you soon. And we've also got Charlie and Logan back with us. So let's say hello to them this morning. Hi, boys. Hi. Good morning. Hi. How are you this morning? Good. Good. And what do you like to do at the weekend? Uh, going swimming and what do you like to do? Going to the football. Going to the football and going swimming. They're both great things I actually love to do as well. Super idea. Thanks, boys. We'll come back to you soon. Let's have a wee look at the comments and see what people at home like to do as well, Lisa. So I can see that Ted likes to play with his Lego. So that's something you could do in lockdown and out of lockdown. So that's a good one. And B also likes to watch television. And we've got Orla and Enya as well who like going in the paddling pool on hot days. That's a great thing to do, isn't it? To cool yeah. down when I the weather's going nice. That also, Miss McPherson. And we've got Philip, who likes to go to his friend's house. 
Yeah, that's a great thing that I like to do. And since the restrictions were kind of lifted a little bit, I've been visiting my friends in their garden as well. And they've came to my garden to see us. So lots of fun things that we like to do at the weekend. So you can see we've got some on screen as well. So you might want to play games. Um, you might want to go to the cinema, like Liam said. You might go to the sweet shop as well. Some of the things I like to do is maybe read a book or you might want to have a picnic at the beach or eat some ice cream. Lots and lots of different things that we can do at the weekend. So what I want you to do now is look back at the list that you made or the comments that you sent us in and have a think about the following three questions. Does every item or activity cost money? Number two, which item or activity from your list do you think would be the cheapest? And why might it be important to keep track of all your spending, even the small costs? And we're going to flip back to Charlie and Logan to see if they can answer some of these questions for us based on what they thought they liked to do at the weekend. Mm. So does every item or activity that you boys like to do, does it always cost money or is it anything that you like to do that you would consider as, a wee, as free, doesn't cost any money? Uh, not everything costs money that we like to do. So tell me some of the things that you like to do that doesn't cost money then. Uh, seeing our friends and seeing our family. Seeing your friends and seeing your family. And that's a great one, Charlie. But I'm going to put you on the spot here. And I'm going to ask, do you walk to see your friends and family all the time? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. What do you do if you can't walk? Uh, Go in the car. Go in the car, and is it free? Or does the car need petrol? The car needs petrol. The car needs petrol. <laughs> so sometimes we don't think about these things, do we? Because I would be the same as you. I would have went, yeah, I can go and visit my friends and family, and that's something I can do. It doesn't cost money. It doesn't cost mm. much money, but there is a wee small cost in petrol, isn't there, if we can't walk to them? Super, thank you so much. I think the most important thing to remember is that keeping track of spending, no matter how small it is, will help you manage your money better, won't it? So yeah. now let's hear from our fantastic community banker, Lisa, to tell us more about spending. Thanks, Miss McPherson. So when we're thinking about spending, the bank can help people keep track of that. So we have things like text and email alerts on your accounts where we can send you a text or an email when you've spent a certain amount of money on your account and you have a balance there. So you can set that balance. Sometimes you can set it at £50 or £100. And when you go below that balance, we'll let you know so that you can think, you need to watch what I'm spending now because I'm now at the, the lower end of my balance. Also, we have a mobile app, Miss McPherson, and on that we have a spending tab, which means that we can put everything into little sections, all our shopping into a section, our takeaways into a section, and that way, at a quick glance, we can see where we are spending all our money. So that's a really useful tool. Yep. But also, banks can help customers look at what they're spending during their financial health checks which looks at their direct debits and standing orders and looks to see whether or not we are spending money on things that we don't really need to. For example, a lot of the time people have gym memberships, but they don't actually go to the gym. So how about we look at that to see whether or not we can cancel that and save that gym subscription so that we are not spending it. Super. Some really interesting information there, Lisa. Thanks for sharing it with us. I think now we should have a little look at the Smith family. So Mr and Mrs Smith have two children and they live in a house with their pet cat Lucky. On the screen you can see some of the things that they spent money on during one week last summer. So I wonder if you could look at the pictures and descriptions on the slide and then try and sort the Smith's family spending into three specific groups. If you're doing this on paper at home, it might be a good idea to just split your page into three sections and then put number one, number two and three at the top of each section and then write whichever letters you think come under each one. If you're watching live and are able to post in the comments, then you can just send the numbers and letters that you think match up. So our three different categories are things that you think cost less than £2, 
things that you think would cost between two pounds and ten pounds and things that you think cost more than ten pounds and as you can see we've got nine different pictures there so we've got a home cooked meal for the whole family so that would serve the whole family both mr and mrs smith and their two kids we've got a new pencil case for school one piece of fruit a whole family trip to the cinema a week of food for the pet so for lucky to feed her or him i don't know if it's a boy or a girl a bus ticket a board game a swimming lesson and an ice lolly so i'm looking you to, looking for you sorry to put all of those different pictures into one of the three categories and if you can post them as a comment while we're waiting for that to happen let's join joseph and liam and we'll choose i think we'll just go for the first one boy so we've got a picture a is a home cooked meal for the whole family so where do you think that would go what category would you put that in uh, number two. Number two. So you think that would cost between two pounds and ten pounds? And what about you, Liam? Do you agree with that, or would you put it in a different category? Because some people might have different answers. I put it on three. You would think that I mean for the whole family to so to feed all four of them it would cost more than 10 pounds. I think they're both very sensible answers and we'll have a look at the answers very soon. Thanks boys. And let's go to Charlie and Logan to see, let's choose, let's go for the last one. Let's go for I, so it's an ice lolly. Where would you put that? What category? Number three, no, number, number one. one number one so you think an ice lolly would cost less than two pounds i think you might be right but i'm not going to give you the answers just yet thanks boys okay. let's have a wee look at the comments then so i can see it's coming up as fiona but i don't know who she's with she has said that a piece of fruit would go in category one so it would cost less than two pounds that makes sense i think We've also got Orla and Enya saying that they would put B, D and H in category three. So B is a new pencil case for school. D is a whole family trip to the cinema and H is a swimming lesson. So they're putting that in the category that says cost more than £10. Oh, that must be an expensive pencil case. Let's see if I can refresh my comments. We've got B agreeing with Charlie and Logan saying that ice lollies would cost less than two pounds. So we've not got D, E, F, G yet. So we're still waiting. Where do you think a whole family trip to the cinema would be? Oh, sorry, we did have D. We do have D. So it's just E, F and G. A week of food for Lucky, a bus ticket and a board game. So that's the three that we're waiting on to come in. So what you can do in your comments is put group one and then put the letters that you think match group one and then the same for group two and group three. And then that way you're giving us all the items that you think go into each group. So we've got Kieran who is saying veg is in one. So I think that's the piece of fruit maybe. Um, yep. C um, goes into group one. That's a popular one. We've had that before. So I think that must be the right answer. I wonder if we should flip back to Charlie and Logan to see if they can tell us where they would put a week of food for Lucky. So letter E. Where would you put that, Charlie and Logan, in group one, group two, or group three? Um, group two. Group two, you think that would cost between two pounds and ten pounds to feed um, their pet cat, Lucky. Have you got a pet, Charlie or Logan? No. No, neither have I. So I don't actually know if that's the right answer, but hopefully we'll find out soon. Thank you. 
I can see that Rachel has said a bus ticket would come into group three. So she thinks that would cost more than £10. So I wonder if she's maybe buying like one for the week or something, um, or that she's maybe traveling really far. So then that bus ticket would maybe come in there. So that's probably one that could go in all three categories, depending on where you're going. Got Rachel again saying that she thinks that our final one, a board game, would come into group three as well. So she thinks that would cost more than £10. And I think I have to agree with her. I think most board games now do cost more than £10. But you could maybe get one for between £2 and £10. So I think the most likely answers are C, F and I. So that's the fruit, the bus ticket and the ice lolly would be in group one. But again, they could come in all the different groups depending on how you look at it. For group two, so the things that cost between £2 and £10, I think the most likely answers are a meal and the pencil case. The cinema. Sorry, it's really small on my screen now. And what's the other one? A week to feed Lucky. And then for the last one, things that cost more than £10, we've got a whole family trip to the cinema, a board game and a swimming lesson. So well done, everyone. Sounds good. So now that we've discussed roughly how much all of the small things that the Smith family did that week cost, would you say that that was an expensive week for them? So I want you to think about how much roughly each of these things would cost based on where you put them and have a wee think about how much all of them would cost altogether. And we're going to join Charlie and Logan to see what they think. So if you were to add all of these things up, how much do you think the Smith family would have spent all together, boys? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Do you think it would have been a lot of money? It would have been about over uh, 40. About over 40 pounds, you think? About over 45. So around 45? Yeah. Super, thanks. And let's see what Fiona, um, not Fiona, sorry, Fiona's mum, Liam and Joseph think. We think 60. You think about 60, so you've gone yeah. higher than Charlie and Logan, and you think they've spent about 60 altogether? Yeah? Yeah. Right, let's flip to the next si slide then, Jamie. And we'll see what each item cost. So you can see what each item cost now. So on your calculator at home, if you have one, or try and round some of the numbers up and do a bit of mental maths to try and calculate how much they actually did spend so that we can find out for sure. I wonder who can be first in the comments to let us know how much they spent all together. I think this is a tricky one, Miss McPherson. This is quite a hard one, isn't it? If I was doing it, I would maybe have a wee think. So 9.46 is roughly about £10. 6.60, that would down to £7. So you've got probably about £18 in that first row. Um, £22, if you add that on, that goes quite nicely. So that would be about 40 wouldn't it? Yeah. And we've got roughly about 10 and 1. Yeah. Um, so that would maybe be about 51. Yeah. And then we've got 15, so that would take us to 66. 25 would take us to about 81. And then we've got £1.20. So I'm going to go with, because I rounded some of them down and some of them up, I'm going to just go with a, a kind of round number. Someone said 100, which I was thinking it would be close to, but I think I'm going to guess 90. Jamie, have we got the answer? Ah, there we go. So I think it was Morna, who I think's with B, she said £100. So it was roughly 
90 pounds that they spent so if you got close to that then well done so charlie and logan thought 45 and it was actually double so that just shows that the little um costs actually add up doesn't it lisa yep and we don't that's the ones that we don't realize um that the small things do matter but the key message here is buying lots of little items always does add up and you can end up spending more money than what you think so when you are buying the small things you need to put them all together because they will have a big impact so writing them down is a good idea couldn't agree more lisa so let's look at some more examples of small costs that can have a big impact for our next activity we're going to read and listen to the information about Rob on the screen. And I want you to suggest what he could do to improve his situation and let us know in the comments below if you can. So Rob's saying, I have no idea what I spend each day. My family always give me a bit of money for school, but I just throw it in my bag. I just want to buy, I just buy what I want, sorry, and don't really think about it until I run out of money. And then I just ask for some more. So I know for a fact, based on a previous lesson, that he shouldn't just be throwing it in his bag. He should have it in a wallet or in a zip bit or something in his bag so that it's not all lying about at the bottom. But what I want you to have a think about is what could he do to improve his spending behaviour? And if you have any ideas, pop them in the comments or write them down on paper at home. And we're going to go to Joseph and Liam today. What do you think, boys? Uh, uh, count it before he puts it in his wallet. Yeah, it might be a good idea. So you're telling him he should put it in a wallet for a start, not just in his bag. So that's a good point. And he should count how much he has and maybe even how much he spends so that he knows how much he's got left. Yeah. Yeah. Do you agree, Liam? Yes. Yeah, sounds good, doesn't it? So what I was thinking is he could try and set himself a budget and B's agreeing with me because she's saying that he should work out how much things cost. So if he knows how much things cost, he can set himself a budget and only spend a certain amount of money each day. Or he could write down what he spends each week in a notepad or on a wee timetable or something so that he could find out how much he spends in total so as not to waste his money. That would be a good idea, wouldn't it, boys? Yes. Yeah. Yep, super, thank you. And um, we've got um, whoever's with Claire Brown saying, put money in a wallet. So she's agreeing with the boys, note down what he spends and budget for future weeks. So she was thinking along the same lines as me too. Perfect. Now, um, I'm doing it again, Miss McPherson, I know, but it is the last week of Money Sends Mondays for our five to eight year olds. Shall we do a little extra challenge? Oh, why not? We may as well. So on the screen, we should see Anna. Now, Anna buys a snack every day. Now, she has 50 pence each day in her purse so that she doesn't spend any more than that. But some days... She doesn't feel very hungry. But I just buy something anyway and give it to my friend as it's only 50 pence. Anna doesn't think that spending 50 pence a day makes a big difference. However, if she decided not to spend her 50 pence just one day a week, how much would she save for that whole year? So 50 pence one day a week. So there's 52 weeks in the year. And we've got 50 pence every week. So 50 pence times our 52 weeks. So if you do your maths and comment below or write your answer down in a bit of paper and let me know how much Anna would save if she just saved that 50 pence one day a week rather than buying something that she didn't need. That's quite a tricky one, actually, though, isn't it, Lisa? Yeah, I went a little bit out there today because it is our last week, Miss McPherson. And I think we've got Harriet. She has said £26, 
which I believe, if that my calculations are correct as well, is the right answer, Lisa. Well, we check with Charlie and Logan. Let's have a check with the boys because they seem to be really switched on this morning. What's the answer? Plenty set. So, yep. We are again. Well done, boys. <laughs> So yes, £26 is correct. So Anna doesn't have to spend her money each day. If she doesn't need or want something, she can save that money. And if she saved 50 pence one week for the whole year, that would be £26. Over long periods of time, small spends can add up into large sums of money. So it's very important to always try these things. And think about them on a daily, weekly or monthly basis. But how often do you spend money? And how much money do you spend? How much money do you save? And could that money be used differently? So just something for you to go away and have a little think about when it comes to spending. Thanks, Lisa. We've got lots of people in the comments also coming in with £26. So well done to you all for getting the correct answer. And Ted actually said you could buy a Lego set for that. So that's a very good point to make. If you save that 50 pence, if Anna was to save that 50 pence because she doesn't really want to spend it, she was just spending it for the sake of it to spend 50p a day, then if she saved it up, she could maybe buy something bigger. It might not be a Lego set, but she could be on the right lines to buy something similar that she likes that costs a wee bit more than 50 pence, couldn't she? So that was a great point from Ted. Thank you. Time's really flying, but we're going to try a little quiz to see what you've learned today. It's quite an easy one this week, so all you have to do is listen to the statements. They're all going to come on the screen in a little minute. There's four different statements, and you can just pop in whether you think they're true or false. So you could just put TTFT or TTTT or FFFF, whatever you think. So all four um, of your answers can come in in the one comment. So I'll read through the statements as you are typing in your answers. So number one, we've got keeping track of spending is important so people can manage their money. Number two, lots of small cost items can cause problems as they all add up and can result in spending lots of money. Number three, everyone should spend a small amount of money each day. And number four, using a timetable or a notepad can help people be more organised with their spending. So four statements, really easy quiz this week. Which ones do you think are true? Which ones do you think are false? And you can just use T for true, like I said, or F for false. So let's see who can get the correct sequence first. So we've got Ted and B saying TTFT. We've got Kane, I think, saying TTFT as well. Isabel's agreeing with TTFT. Lisa, are the people at home correct? Yeah, that is. So true, true, false, true. So that number three was a bit of a tricky one, wasn't it? Everyone should spend a small amount of money each day. So you might have thought, oh, if I spend a small amount, then I'm not spending a lot of money. But there's no point in spending money just for the sake of it. So you don't actually have to spend money each day. So well done to everyone for getting that one correct, because that one tricked me a little bit. We've not got much time, but we can maybe flip to our connected families for a few questions since it is our last one. So let's go to Joseph and Liam first to see if they have any questions they would like to ask either me or Lisa for one last time. How's a good way for not spending too much money? How's a good one? Good question, boys. So the best way to do it is to plan and have a budget so that you know how much you can spend and then that way that you're not going to spend too much. So always know how much you can afford to spend. Thanks, boys. And it's been lovely having you with us for the past three weeks. Thank you for joining us. Let's quickly go to Charlie and Logan. I know we're really running out of time, but just a wee quick question from Charlie and Logan. Uh, have you both had fun doing Money Sense Mondays? Oh, great. Fun. 
Yep, I've absolutely loved it and it's been great to meet you and Logan. So thank you so much for joining us. You've been so hard working. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Sorry we didn't have any time to take any questions from you at home, but I have been so impressed at the quality of questions over the past eight weeks. A massive thank you to Lisa for answering them all for us. I think it's fair to say that children and adults alike have really benefited from all of your incredible knowledge and expertise, Lisa. Thanks, Miss McPherson. And just one last thing to help you with low-cost spending. So always be organised. Give yourself a budget every day. Write down the cost of something that you're wanting on your notepad or your timetable, no matter how small it is. Because add up the cost of everything that you buy every day or week and you'll see that you can't overspend. Great tips, Lisa. Thank you so much for sharing them with us. And on the final note, if you really want to learn some more over the summer holidays, you can still visit the My Money Sense website. There's lots and lots of interactive activities for you. And also, if you have missed any of our sessions or you want to watch them again, remember all eight recordings are now on our Facebook page and also our YouTube channel as well. Sounds like lots of fun. As this is our final session, we wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone for joining us. We hope you enjoyed participating and learning more about money with us over the past eight weeks. We've loved every minute all of it, especially hearing from all of you and our participant families. In the next 30 minutes, we're going to be exploring starting a business for children aged eight to 12. Keep learning about money. Have a great summer. Take care and stay safe. Bye for now. Thanks everyone. Bye. Good afternoon and welcome to Money Sense Mondays. This session today is for 30 minutes and for children between the ages of 8 and 12. And we're going to be looking at starting something new, starting a business. How cool is that? Now, my name is Lisa Lawfer and I'm the community banker for the Royal Bank of Scotland, covering Ventreshire, Inverclyde and also North Ayrshire. Starting a new business can be so exciting. However, it can also be very risky, if not thought out carefully. There are some things that entrepreneurs, people who set up businesses, can do to limit these risks and try and make money, such as keep things simple, monitor their costs and be passionate about the project. People might think that in life there are perfect times to start something new. However, this isn't always the case. It's important, however, to be knowledgeable in the area that you wish to make profit in. Most people already possess all the tools that they need to run small businesses. Particularly now, in a world where young people have so much technology at their fingertips. Now, I didn't have that when I was a youngster. So where do you begin to start a new business? That's what we're going to find out today with the help from Miss McPherson. Hi everyone, my name is Miss McPherson and I'm a primary teacher in Scotland. This is our eighth and final Money Sensation. I can't believe it. As you know, it's time for us all to enjoy a well-deserved summer break after all of this year's learning, both in school and at home. Lisa and I have loved being virtually welcomed into your home to help you learn different money topics and so we're looking forward to sharing lots of exciting activities with you all today for one last time. During the session you'll need some pens and paper so ha hopefully you have these all already but if not quickly go and collect them now. I can see in the comments that lots and lots of you have joined us this morning but we're just going to get started as we've got a lot to get through. So all businesses have a direction or focus for what they want to achieve. These are sometimes known as a vision or mission statement. On the screen now, you can see some examples of companies' mission statements. So, for example, we've got IKEA. Their mission statement is to create a better everyday life for many people. 
We've got TED and their mission statement is just simple spread ideas. And lastly, we've got Google and their mission statement is to organise the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. So your task is to have a think of what your mission statement would be if you were able to start your own business. Discuss your thoughts with someone at home and share them with us in the comments if you can. And while you're all having a think about that, we're going to join the connected families that we have with us today to see what they would call their company and what their mission statements would be. So first of all, we've got Sienna and Neve who have joined us again. They were with us last week. Good afternoon, girls. Good afternoon. Hi. How are you? Good, how good. are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you for asking. So have you had a little think about this in advance for me of what you we call your company or what your mission statement would be? Yeah. yeah. Super, share it with us. Our company would be called Watermelon and it would be here to keep the nation connected. So and it would be called... Sorry, Uncle. Water watermelon. Watermelon. And what's your mission statement again? Um, here to keep the nation connected. Here to keep the nation connected. So how are you doing that? Because we're gonna and um, we were gonna it would be like a phone, it would be an electronics selling company. Ah, super. Sounds good. Thanks for sharing your idea with us, girls. And the company we're against is Apple. Oh. So you're trying to compete against Apple to try because and make them even better with small. <laughs> you think they're too small. So yours would be a wee bit bigger. So you're using Apple and maybe the mistakes that you think they've made make a better one. Great, yeah. girls really fall into that. Well done. Thank you. We'll come back to you soon. Let's join. Have you got Leah with us? Hi Leah, nice to have you back. Hi. Have you had a wee think about this at all? Yeah. Yeah, do you want to share your ideas with us? Kitty Cat Cafe. Have the best cats and cakes. So mm -hmm. you're having a kitty cat cafe, so I'm assuming the cat, you come along to the cafe with your cat. Yeah? Yeah. And they've got the best cakes as well? Yeah. I mean, I don't have a cat, but I'd go anywhere for a good cake. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing that with us, Leah. That's super. We'll come back to you soon. And um, we've got a new family with us this morning. So let's say good afternoon to Alfie and Ollie. Hi, boys. Hi. Hi. What are you thinking then? What would your company be and what would your mission statement be? Uh, our company would be a football and dance academy. Sounds good. A football and dance academy. And what's your mission statement then? Uh, to develop young people born to be credited themselves the families and the academy wow that sounds like a great one thanks for sharing that with us boys we'll come back to you soon as well so let's have a wee look at the comments then so we've got Aidan who would start up his business of a game shop and his kind of mission statement he wants it to be to make the world more fun so that's a really good one because toys are quite fun aren't they our games are quite fun Yep, and we've got Ethan from Gurok, so his company would be called Gaming Pro, and it would be to help people improve their gaming skills. Sounds like lots of great ideas at home. So there is no one correct answer or one correct mission statement for each thing. Obviously, it's up to you. It's your business, and you come up with your own mission statement. So well done to everyone for that. Now let's hear some more from our community banker Lisa to tell us more about what the bank does to help people start their business. Thanks Miss McPherson. So banks have business accounts as well as personal accounts and depending on what type of business you have, so it might be a limited company, it might be a sole trader, that would determine what type of business account you would need and whether or not you would have a business manager or a central team that would look after your accounts. But banks have aspirational targets have been set to 50,000 new businesses across the UK by 2023. Now there is a focus on young people to start up their own businesses through the Pinces Trust Enterprise Programme, which provides training, money and most importantly support to help make people's dreams become a reality. 
There is also something called the Business Builder Programme, which provides free help and guidance to people starting up new businesses. So lots of places for people to go to get help to make that dream come true, Miss McPherson. Sounds great, Lisa. I might actually start up my own business, but I've not got an idea yet, so I maybe need to think about that. So everyone knows that starting a new business requires funding, as any new venture has startup costs. On the screen, we have come up with some examples of what these costs might be. So I wonder if you could match the picture to the correct description by writing your answers down on paper at home or posting the number and letter that go together in the comments. For example, if you think the first picture matches with statement C, then you would just type 1C in the comments. But this is just an example, so please don't take my word for it. So let's join Leah to start with. And Leah, do you want to pick a picture? So I don't know if the pictures are very clear. So I'll tell you what one to six means, and then you can match them with a statement. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah. So picture number one is just people. Picture number two is a school setting. Picture number three is making a model with materials. Picture number four is lots of buildings. Picture number five is questionnaires and charts. And picture number six is a heart and a brain. So you can pick any of the pictures that you want and match them to a statement that you think is correct. Six. You've got it written down. Six. Yeah. Six with C. So picture number six again was a picture of a heart and a brain, wasn't it? And the statement C is well-being, activities and services to support the health of workers. Yep, I totally agree with that. I think that picture six matches with statement C. So well done, Leah. Thanks for that. We'll come back to you soon. We've got Owen, who is age 11 at home who is saying that picture number one, so that was a picture of the people, matches with statement A. So that's staff salary. So you would need money to pay the people who work for you. So I would agree with that. Yep, I think that's correct as well. Maybe we could join Anna and Neve to see if they would like to match one for us. Um, so two. Are you just going to choose one? Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Gail. Yeah, we did two and E. So you think picture number two of a school setting would go with statement E, which is educating staff so that they are highly skilled and knowledgeable. I completely agree with that as well. Yep, you would need to train your staff so that they know what they're doing, wouldn't you? Yeah. Super girls, thank you. We've got Nayab at home who is saying that picture number three, which is a picture of making a model with materials, would go with statement B, which is materials to make the product. So, yep, that definitely matches. Let's see if we've got any other comments at home. So, what numbers are we still waiting for, Miss McPherson? I think we're waiting on four and five, Lisa. Four and five. Oh, and there we've got Aiden giving us both of them. Super. And we've got Kathleen as well, giving us four. So let's see what Kathleen said for four. And then we'll do Aiden for number five. So she's got picture four matching with statement D, which is a picture of buildings matching with renting or buying workspace for business. So, yep, I completely agree with that. And Aiden has said number five, picture number five, which was the questionnaires and charts, would go with statement F, which is collecting information about a product from different places. So, yep, I think we've definitely got all the answers there, Lisa. But Miss McPherson, it's good to remember that there's many different ways that a business can source finance to pay for their new company. So they can do this through using their own personal savings, which we have covered in the weeks before, but how we can save money. But there's also other things such as there's government grants that they can apply for. They can also apply to their bank for a bank loan. There's credit cards that they can do as well to get credit. And there's even crowdfunding pages that they can set up online as well to get that money that way as well. So lots of different ways that we can get finance 
to then pay for salaries, materials, well-being, facilities, training, and also the market research. I actually didn't know that, Lisa, but at least that means that they do have plenty of options if they have that great idea and want to start up their own business. Now, I want you to imagine that you actually have your own business. What would you want to spend the money on? Look back at the options from the activity we just completed and decide out of those six, where do you think would be best to spend that money and why? You can write your ideas in the comments or on paper at home. So we've got the pictures and the statements back up again for us. So where do you think if you were running your own business, you would spend your money on most? What would you spend your money on most? So let's go to Alfie and Ollie then for this one to see what they think. So boys, you were thinking about coming up with your dance and football business, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so where do you think? Uh, materials for equipment and stuff to use. Yep, I think that's a great one. You would really need materials. You can't play football without a ball, can you? No. Nope, so you would need to buy lots and lots of different equipment. Super, thank you. And let's see what Sienna and Neve were thinking as well then. Um, we were thinking um, training because we need um, people to help us like like with the company yeah so, so you're thinking it. yep so you're thinking of sending um the staff that you employ on training so that they can help to make this new phone that you want to compete with apple with yeah yeah super sounds good let's have a look at the comments then so we've got katie who would spend her money on facilities so renting or buying a workspace for her business and we've got Orla who said B for materials um, as it would be a physio business that Orla set up. So she needs a bed, etc., which could cost a lot of money. Sounds good. So one of the costs mentioned in the previous activity was market research. So research is at the heart of every business and there is far more to this process than just selling products or creating adverts. Market research is about finding out what customers want, which can be done in two different ways. So first of all, we have primary research, which is carried out face to face with people. Or we have secondary research, which is carried out on a computer or a tablet or something. So look at the market research examples that are on the screen now and categorise them correctly by putting them under the correct heading. You can feel free to share your answers in the comments or write your answers on paper at home. So we've got questionnaires, observations, surveys, books, articles, discussion groups, newspapers, testing products and the internet. So lots of different ways we can conduct market research. So what ones do you think would be primary research and what ones do you think would be secondary research? If you're posting in the comments, then you could write number one and then all of the letters that you would put in primary research and then number two and all of the, the letters you would put in secondary research if that's a little easier for you. And we're going to go back to Leah and I'm going to ask you, Leah, where you think questionnaires would go? Do you think that would be primary research or secondary research? Primary research. You would put that in primary research? Okay, sounds good. We'll see what the people at home think and we'll check our answers in a little bit. Thanks. And let's go to Alfie and Ollie again as well. And I'm going to pick a random one for you boys. What about discussion groups? Do you think that's primary research or secondary research? Primary research. Primary research. So you would put that in the number one column. Super, thank you. And let's choose a random one for Neve and Sienna as well. Let's go E. E, Lisa, you choose the articles. Yeah. Where would you put it? I think it could be um, primary research because you'd normally find like articles in newspapers and that. Okay, so they've got newspapers in G. So are you saying that? you could find an article in a newspaper but you could also maybe find it online yes. so it could potentially go in both yes 
Super, thank you. Let's have a wee look at the comments then. So I can see Katie has said that she would put the internet and in secondary research. So she's popped I, which was the internet and in secondary research. I would agree with that. We've also got Aidan, who has put G newspapers in primary. So I think I'm yep, not sure. Um, we've got Edward, who's 10, and he has put surveys in primary research. But Edward's also put newspapers in secondary. So he's got a different answer to Aidan. So it'll be quite interesting, Miss McPherson, to see what the answers are. Yeah, let's just have a look at the answers just now, because I think I'm even getting confused. So we've got questionnaires, observations, surveys, discussion groups and testing products all in primary research. And interestingly, they've put surveys in the secondary research as well. And I think there's a few that could both that could all be like that, where they would be in both columns. But they've got books, articles, newspapers and the Internet and secondary research as well. So well done to everyone who guessed them correctly. And just another wee extra challenge, Miss McPherson. You know I like these just now. Of course. So starting up a new business can mean new ways of working. Being original and creative are essential in having a successful business. Now on paper, I would like you to write down what you think the term blue sky thinking means. If you can, share in the comments below also. So what do you think blue sky thinking means? And we're thinking about making a new business. So we're being original and we're being creative. So using those things, what do you think the term blue sky thinking means? Miss McPherson's got a little puzzled look. She's not 100% sure yeah, either. I'm not quite sure about this one. This is a really tricky challenge this week, Lisa. I will say it's the last one. Will we join one of our families? Yeah, let's have a think about what they think. Can we join Sienna and Neve? We think it's to open new ideas, explore and explore to the, to the heights of blue skies. Ah, that's a good way of thinking. Well done. Yeah. Well done, girls. Let's see if we've got any at home, Miss McPherson. We've got Orla saying that she thinks that it means you have no limits. Good. And we've also got Aiden, yeah. Yep. So blue sky thinking um, involves a group of people looking at an opportunity with fresh eyes and an open mind and coming up with as many ideas as possible. So again, no limits to the amount of ideas that you have. Um, and in these sessions, no idea is a silly idea. And you may also have heard thinking outside the box. That's very similar to blue sky thinking. Ah, uh, that makes much more sense to me now, Lisa. I've heard of thinking outside the box, but I had never heard of blue sky thinking before. So that's me learning something new today as well. So hopefully some of you feel inspired to think about starting your own business when you're older or would like to study more about business at school. We hope that this lesson has given you some useful information for a successful future. And we're now going to try a quick four question quiz to see what you've learned today about starting a business. So you can write your answers down on paper or you can comment them below for us to see before we reveal the correct answers. Lisa, let's have a little check at who has really been listening today. Last quiz. So number one, what is an entrepreneur? So remember, Lisa told us that at the very, very beginning of the session when she was introducing us to starting a new business who can remember what an entrepreneur is i wonder if we should join sienna and neve it's someone who starts their own business so you think this is uh, an entrepreneur is someone who starts their own business exactly that's exactly what i had an entrepreneur is just someone who starts their own business and we've got Katie agreeing with that as well and Edward's just come in with someone who starts their own business so well done great work thanks girls number two then we've got what is needed to start a business what is needed to start a business 
So there might be a few things that's needed, but there's always one thing that you really need to start your own business. I wonder who will be first in the comments to let us know. Let's keep refreshing them. Yep. Lots of people coming in with their answer to number one as well, getting it all correct, super. And we've got Nayab coming in for number two, saying equipment and staff. Yep, you do need that to start a business, but the one first thing, I think Edward's kind of hit the, um, got it right, he said a good idea. So you always yeah. need a good idea and some confidence and self-belief that it's going to work and make sure that you always continue to persevere even if it doesn't go to plan at the beginning. Super, yeah. we've got number three, what is market research? So what I covered this not so long ago, missing person. Yeah, I wonder if they can remember. Market research, can anyone be first to tell us what market research is? So I've got lots of people answering number two as well. They're just coming in. I definitely think they know, Lisa. I think it's just a wee bit tricky to get the comment in quickly. Yep. Will we join Leah and see if Leah can tell us what market yeah. research is just Let's now? Do that. So Leah, when can you, you tell us what market research is? Yeah, when you collect information about people and products. Yep. Super, when yep. we're finding out what customers need or customer want or customers want through lots of different ways and we sorted them, didn't we, into primary and secondary research. So thanks for that, Leah. And I'm going to skip the last one because I know we're running out of time. I want to take some questions and we just spoke about it there. So it was, what is Blue Sky Thinking? And we all just um, spoke about it and we said that that was the creation of new ideas from lots of discussion and thought generation. So that idea of thinking outside the box and trying to come up with something that's not out there already. So you're a bit more original and it's there's a gap in the market for it. So let's very quickly, before we finish, take some quick quid questions. So that's some time in the session for us to answer some of your great questions about money. So if you have a question, pop them in the comments and we'll do our very best to answer at least a few of them. So let's join Sienna and Neve to start us off then with our quick quid questions today. Okay, so if I was to go start a business tomorrow, what support can the bank give me? Good question. Um, so with the bank, we can obviously help you with the financial side, but we also have business teams that will look at your idea and help evaluate them and see whether or not that needs any changes or tweaks to make sure that you're going to be a profitable business. There's also things outside the bank that I mentioned earlier that we could have a wee look at as well, and the bank would give you all that information so that you could go away and make the right decision on whether or not your plans are going to be the best plans for you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us, girls. Let's go to Alfie and Ollie then and see if they've got a question. Uh, what has been your favourite money sense uh, session? Why? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I'll go first with this one. I think, oh, I don't know if I can choose one. They've all been really great, haven't they, Lisa? Yeah, and they've all been so different as well. I think the first one was probably yeah. the most exciting because we had never done it before and didn't know if it was going to work and it really did work. I think I have to agree with you there Lisa because that was the one I was most nervous for and I think it's the one that we had most engagement in. Um, so yeah the first one I think was really really good just because it was something different and something that none of us had ever experienced before but that was an absolutely fantastic question boys and it was absolutely brilliant to have you with us for this last week. Thank you. Thanks. Well I'm afraid that time is nearly 
Um, we're nearly running out of time, sorry. So I just want to say a massive thank you for all of the questions. I've been really impressed at the quality of questions that we've received over the past eight weeks. And I want to say a really massive thank you to Lisa for answering them all for us too. I think it's fair to say that children and adults alike have really benefited benefited from your incredible knowledge and expertise so thank you so much for that you're welcome and miss mcpherson just my last top tip or fun fact today um at the start of 2019 in the uk there were 5.8 million small businesses on the go wow that's a lot isn't it and i'm sure this number is continuing to grow i think it's growing too and remember, boys and girls, if you do want to learn more, even though Money Sense Mondays aren't here, you can look on the Money Sense website and there's lots of games, videos and articles for your grown-ups to have a look at too. Also, if you'd like to watch any of our previous eight lessons, then you can do so on the Royal Bank Facebook page or on the Royal Bank YouTube channel as well. And as this is our final lesson for the moment, I wanted to just say a huge thank you to everyone for joining us. We really do hope you've enjoyed learning more about money with us today and over the past eight weeks. We've really enjoyed every single lesson and we're so grateful for all your comments and contributions. If you have watched us over the multiple weeks, then even more so. Please leave us a comment letting us know how much you've enjoyed our lesson and what was your favourite lesson. Yes, thanks to everyone for joining us the past eight weeks and to all our particip participant families who have taken part. We have loved every minute of it and we hope that you have too. It has been an absolute pleasure to help you learn lots of new things during this unprecedented time. So a big well done to everyone who has taken part, especially those who shared their great answers and questions with us. Keep learning about money. Have a great summer. Take care and stay safe. Bye for now. Bye everyone. Oh